Hi, I'm Lady Charmaine, and I have another great guest for you today on the Lady Charmaine Live Show. And in all, as always, we always bring you great interviews, especially from a, one of the shows that I love. It's TV One's Unsung. And my guest today is a Brooklyn native who exploded onto the rap scene in the late 80s with hits like I Got It Made, Think About It, and I'm the Magnificent. And he is here today to talk about his 30-year career in the entertainment business and his TV One Unsung episode that's going to be airing this Sunday. I want you to help me welcome to the Lady Charmaine live show. He goes by the name of Special Ed. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Lady Charmaine? How's everything? Good. It's a beautiful day in the yes, neighborhood. It absolutely yes, indeed. is. And I know it's real beautiful for you because you celebrated a birthday this past May 16th. So happy birthday to you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's always good yes, to be I in the did. land yes, of the living. I know that's right. And you have a whole lot going on because first I want to say congratulations on your TV One Unsung episode, The Story of Special Ed. So congratulations. Thank you. Now, Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a, it's been a long time mm -hmm. coming, really. You know, I, I really don't talk much about my personal life. I keep it business and music. And um, at the end of the day, people ask questions a lot, and I felt like I wanted to at least answer some of those questions or give them a perspective at, as to what occurs, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, were you surprised when you got the call, or were you anticipating a call like this so you can show your story? Um, I was, at some point, they got, you know, at some point it has to be known, so I knew it was a matter of time, but, you know, Kwame which is one of my brothers, you know, my family in the industry here. Um, he did one recently and mm -hmm. he contacted me and let me know that they were interested. And I thought about it for a minute and I said, you know what? I think it's about time to, um, you know, at least say something. Uh, absolutely. You know? And, you know, it's amazing how, you know, our music can definitely become timeless. Because when I was sharing with my daughter, I said, you know, I'm going to be interviewing a gentleman by the name of Special Ed. And I was like, um, I, I didn't think she knew who you were. I said, do you know who that is? And she busted out with I Got It Made, all the lyrics. I had to pick my <laughs> face up and she said, oh, yeah, she said, I learned it from Amen. dad. <laughs> so my daughter's 15 years old. So yeah. definitely when I say I got it made, Amen. she's 15. So look how many years that is that we're from when you started off at 15 to where my 15 year old is now quoting, I got it made. So congratulations. Exactly. And that's amazing. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And that means that the music has impacted people and is timeless. And that's my goal. Now you so begin your career. Goal, so. Right. And so you get, you began your career at 15. And when you, when did you realize that you had the gift of lyrics? Cause not everybody have that. See, I can't rhyme. I can never be a rapper. I don't have that skill. But when did you realize that you had a gift? In uh, junior high school, mm -hmm. when I felt like I accumulated enough rhymes <laughs> and I can start spitting some now with some confidence. And, um, you know, I started getting a little, ciphers and little battles and i was doing my thing so it was a great look and everybody was like yo you sound good man you should do it so they kind of everyone encouraged me you know i could have did it just to do it to you know humiliate people in a in a battle or you just do it for fun but by people telling me look you you, you got something there mm -hmm. that's what made me move forward and say you know what all right everybody can't be wrong Right, right. And I even in your lyrics, you appear to be a little boastful in your lyrics. Now, were these lyrics because you kind of lived some of this, or were you just speaking your future existence of what you were going to have in the future? It was a little of both. I was really speaking into existence. Mm -hmm. I come, I'm the youngest of five boys, so, you know, nothing comes easy. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't a lavish lifestyle on Church Avenue in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So it was basically an image uh, spoken into existence, you know, what we should have, you know, how we should have it made. So it was like, you know, that type of perspective. Now, you are a true lyricist. Is there a difference between a lyricist and a rapper? Oh, um, I mean, you can use whatever terminology you want, but a lyricist, yeah, I think a lyricist is more into the flow and content of the lyrics. And um, sometimes what I guess they would call a rapper would be someone that's just, you know, trying to uh, 
flow with the music and, you know, cause uh, that type of reaction, you know, like a crowd reaction. They, it's just looking for a reactive kind of music instead of conscious. But either way, you have to have all sorts of entertainment. So mm -hmm. I don't knock anything. I think it's a lot of great music out and um, it's more to come. Right, right. Now, it's so funny. I was watching your It's going to change. You said what, the music's going to change? Yeah, I was, I was just saying, yeah, music is constantly changing mm -hmm. and it's going to change again and again. So mm -hmm. we have to embrace change. And once you can do that, then you can, you know, move forward and learn to enjoy it and uh, make money from it, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Isn't that the goal? <laughs> that is definitely the goal. Yeah, yeah. Now, I was listening to, um, I was watching the screener. Uh, and you have a great story, by the way. And I was listening to Moni Love, and she was talking about how when you were touring, you and Big Daddy Kane had the girls on lock. Tell me, what was one of the wildest experiences that you ever um, experienced on tour? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it was, it was very numerous to mention, but one very wild one would be when uh, I think we were in Virginia, and uh, little Sean was on stage with me. And, you know, we're just having fun doing suggestive stuff. They, mm -hmm. they said it was too sexual and the police, the police wanted to um, come get us. And I had to dip through the backstage, out the door, through the parking lot, into the hotel, all kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to go nowhere. You know oh, you was trying to stay with the party. Over it, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was like Bobby Brown did it. <laughs> oh, you want to do you it too. And, and you know what? You when I look back at your old nah. videos, it's so funny though when I when I listen to you, Ed, and when I watch you now as a, as an adult because you had that smooth look. You even look like you could have been like Indian or East Indian. You had that look, but I believe your mother is she from the West Indies? But I know they're originally from Jamaica. But is she like from the West Indies or anything yeah. like that? Okay, yeah, because you definitely uh, have that look. But when I was listening yeah, Jamaica to... Jamaica is the West Indies. Oh, okay. Well, but yeah, we do me, have huh? family that originate from the East Indies as well. Okay. There's over in, um, yeah, all over the place. Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also Europe. You know what I mean? We all kind of um, mixed here on this earth, blended up. You okay. Know? okay. No, no, that's... It's, okay. a human, it's, called, it's the human race. Amen to that. And the um say amen to that right uh -huh. there. Okay, but uh, yeah, but I just I was just curious because of the look that you kind of had. I was like when I when you first came out, I actually thought you were um, Indian, like Indian and black or something like that. But thank you so much for uh, for educating me on that. But this is one of my questions. We know that there was a lot going on dealing with Profile Records because we definitely did miss you. Thank you so much for sharing your story on Unsung. And I want to remind everyone, his story is going to be airing this Sunday. If you wanted to know what happened, what happened to Special Ed and what he's been doing, because he is a true businessman, make sure you tune in this Sunday to Unsung, airing on TV One Ten Nine Central to catch up with him. And you had to take a class when you were younger because you had to wait to go to court because you were like 15 years old. So you couldn't go on tour. So they had to go through the courts to get you to go on tour, get the courts to approve it. Through that, you had said something like um, you weren't going to school, you were truancy, and you had to take an accounting class. Did you realize that class was going to pay off for you in the end? Yeah, well, that that wasn't exactly the case, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's a little something, you know, it sounds a little something like it, but um, mm -hmm. in actuality, I went, we had to go to court so that the contract would be binding. And um, they couldn't sign a 15-year-old to a legal agreement mm. without the court being involved. Okay. So that was cool. But I didn't have any qualms about that. That was a legal procedure. That didn't have anything to do with, like, you know, I never do tantrums. I don't, you know, I get upset. It's not an emotional thing. It's a business. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, it was business. But while in school now, I did have to take this program. And um, they put me in accounting class. And mm -hmm. I was in there with all senior citizens, like everyone had white hair, <laughs> except for me. Okay. And I had to sit there and go through it. And you had to get over 90 to pass everything and anything. So I did my thing, got through, got my certificate. And it felt like a great sense of achievement at a young age, mm -hmm. you know. I felt like, wow, I did this, that all these grown people just did. I, I accomplished the same thing, you know, and it gave me a different perspective in that respect. But yeah, the program uh, that was designed to fail me, 
actually helped me succeed. So <laughs> I guess it was a success. Absolutely. Because, okay, you have kind of like the same story that a lot of people have in the early uh, beginnings of their uh, music career. Okay, you sign to a record label. Okay, you sell and you hot, you're on tour, and then you start getting checks, and the checks is not adding up. You know, they say, if it don't make money, it doesn't make sense. All of a sudden, you begin to notice how your money wasn't adding up. And like you said, you had taken accounting. Mm-hmm. So in your, in your perspective, I know you say the money wasn't adding up, but in your mind, what wasn't adding up besides the money? How do you count something like that? Although we know that you're selling, but there's a lot of other things that go on behind the scenes. Do you still feel that way once you find out like what they may have had to pay for the tour, pay for the videos, and then this is what you get or what's left over for you? Well, those things costed, those things back then costed nothing. My mm. videos was costed 15000 25000 you know, mm. thirty five was probably the most. That was like, think about it, I think. But um, that money don't add up to nothing. That's a hundred grand, if that. I'm talking about real money. You know, mm-hmm. if you sell a half a million records, add that up, multiply that, and then divide it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just common sense, you know, and I'm from a place where we pay attention. Right, right. You know so what I'm saying? That's one thing we do. You think they don't, but they pay attention. But you were smart enough to send in your own separate accounting uh, firm to actually go in there and count up your dollars. And through that, do you feel that yes. you, you may have been blackballed because you did do something like that and had them come in? Although the labels say that that's not really what happened. Is that what you feel happened? I mean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not even bitter over that. Mm-hmm. It's life. You learn how to do things and how not to do things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not, I don't regret anything that I did. I think that I had to set a precedent. I had to be a martyr. Mm -hmm. I had to do what I had to do, man. So I just could live really, you know. So knowing what you know now, and you see a lot of young people coming up in the industry, what would you have done differently if you had the knowledge? Um, I don't know necessarily if what I would have done differently because I did everything that was suggested. You know, I mm-hmm. went along with the program. Right. Did the shows, did this, did that, did whatever came along. You know, I was into moving forward, forward motion. So if it's, it's moving, I'm on it. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? I don't really turn nothing down. Like, I'm not, I'm not hard to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm doing, I do this for a living. So, you know, why would I make it difficult? Absolutely. But you ended up opening up a studio and you work with like Tupac Shakur, Biggie Smalls, Junior Mafia. You knew how to turn a lemon into lemonade during this particular process. You were even buying apartments. I mean, you literally put that business smarts. And I want to remind everyone, make sure you watch Unsung on Sunday because you're going to hear a great story um, about special ed. But you were able to take that and work with so many artists yeah, no. to today. So what yeah. was that that you had in you to say, you know what? OK, they may be doing this over here, but I'm going to take this smarts that God gave me. And this is what I'm going to do and open up a studio. Well, learning, you got to, um, you know, take money to make money. Mm-hmm. and You have to, you know, be in business to earn business so that's what i that was my model and i learned early i watched howie t shout out to howie t my producer who put mm-hmm. me on to this whole industry you know on, on a whole so i always looked up to him but the first thing i did was buy equipment too mm-hmm. and you know started making beats and going from there you know so it's a, it's it's several different things i didn't feel like i needed like a spacecraft or some special car I felt like I needed something that's going to make me money Mm -hmm. and make me money in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, and this record is not selling or whatever is taking place. You know what I mean? Right. So it's about looking ahead, planning ahead, you know? And then you had fellow New York native Jay-Z. He actually paid homage to you and Empire State of Mind with Alicia Keys. How did that make you feel to know that, you know, he paid homage to you in his music in this day and age that, of course, you're not forgot about, forgotten about, but somebody like Jay-Z was able to do that for you. Right. Well, Jay is from around the way, mm-hmm. you know, Brooklyn then may have been bigger, but now it's, it's, you know, 
smaller to us because we grew up there, but mm -hmm. we are from the same place, man. You know, we have come across each other's past many, many times, even before great success. Mm -hmm. So w w we know each other like that. So he was just saying what it is, you know, New York at the time and the scene and et cetera. But, you know, I, I got love for him just as well. I got love for everybody, man. Like, this is like family to me, mm -hmm. you know? that's what it is it's like a family to me i see another artist and that's like a relative right and like rick ross with his remix yeah. of i'm the magnificent you're keeping your music alive as mm -hmm. well you got rick ross the boss and i'm sure you may have been sampled by so many other uh, artists as well but before we go i wanted to ask you what would be some of the advice that you would give to a brand new artist today from knowing what you know now being in the business for 30 years and experiencing what you experienced what would be like maybe a top three pieces of advice you would give them? One in the great words of my guy from the West Coast, I could give it to you, but what you going to do with it? Mm. Okay? Okay. So figure that out. <laughs> okay. I could give it to you, but what you going to do with it? You know, how, how are you going to make money to secure financially secure your future and future generations, mm. you know, so it's generational wealth is what we're trying to deal with. So how are you going to do that? And then holla at me, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that just one piece of advice? <laughs> how are you going to do it? What you going to nah, do? That was it? two. <laughs> That's two. Okay. <laughs> What's the third one? <laughs> that was two. The other thing, the other thing is live your life and make yourself happy, and um, don't walk on eggshells for nobody. Mm. I mean, don't be offensive and go to jail or do anything unlawful, but live your life freely, man, and be open and upfront with everybody and everything. You know, live with love. Don't don't come at anybody with contempt or hate. You know, that's mm. not even in our nature. You know. I guess it is for some, but that was that's learned behavior. I'm talking about love is what we born with, you know. Mm -hmm. So try that for try that out, you know. Need a little love. OK, now I want to remind everyone that Unsung is going to be airing this Sunday. The story of special ed. When people view your story this Sunday, special ed, before we go, what do you want them to take away from your story? Um, well, just learn that you can achieve things at a young age. Age is literally a number. It's, it's your level of intelligence and how you come out of situation, mm -hmm. you know, so you can achieve great things if you want to, no matter how old you are, young, older, whatever. You just have to put a plan in place and implement a plan and, and execute it, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the words of wisdom. Everybody, special ed, tune in to his TV One Unsung episode st starting this Sunday. It's going to be airing on May the 27th, 10, 9 Central, right there on TV One. You don't want to miss it. It is very good, very enlightening. You ever want to know what happened? Tune in this Sunday, 10, 9 Central on TV One. Thank you so much, Ed, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Be blessed. You too, sir. Bye-bye. Special Ed, everybody, again, tune in Sunday, May the 27th, 10, 9 Central, for the story of Special Ed. And this segment of the Lady Charmaine Life Show is sponsored by Up, Up, and Away Travel Services. Now, if you want to start your own travel business, if you want to get your money on like he was talking about, all you have to do is call my girl Sherry Brockman at 916-826-6606 and start your very own travel business today okay sorry today and again thank you guys so much for tuning into the lady charmaine live show do not forget to follow me right here on social media on instagram at i am lady charmaine and on youtube at lady charmaine tv and facebook lady charmaine live and don't forget to join our facebook hot topics group it's hot topics real talk no chaser. You got a hot topic you want to talk about? Well, drop it right there in the group so we can talk about it live on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. right here on Facebook Live. And again, everybody, thank you so much and definitely have a blessed day. Bye-bye.